What's going on? We back with the Boxing Clinic of Morris, your boy CJ Goodfella. Y'all know what it is. One time for the one time. We grinding. Um, back to talk about some Luis Ortiz. He had a big win over Kanjanyu. I have you announced that guy's name in the second round. Who was going to step up and give Luis Ortiz that work? All right. Um, and that's interesting, man. Um, you know, most people, some people say that uh, Ortiz need one big win. Then he get a title shot at Wilder. Whatever it may be, the uh, the win he got this weekend over Kajanyu wasn't good enough. But that's the same guy that went 12 rounds with Joseph Parker. And Ortiz only went two rounds. And people will tell you and try to downplay Deontay Wilder's over, uh, uh, win over Luis Ortiz. Oh, he too old and this and that. Well, Joseph Parker was like 24 or 25 when he fought Kajanyu. He didn't stop him. You know, and then he just got stopped by Dillian White. Why not? Why not want to see... Uh, Luis Ortiz versus Anthony Joshua next. Do you want to see Luis Ortiz versus, I mean, Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White again? No, because it's looking like Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder is going to fight in December, okay? And to be honest, I know Bell is going to fight Usyk, okay? We're going to talk about him in a minute. Uh, Dillian White needs a dance partner. The Chizora fight would be good domestically for for uh, Eddie Hearn, you know what I'm saying? Big Baby Miller needs an opponent, you know, um, in the near future, if he fights October 6th, get a soft touch, he probably come back one more time this year. So, but I'm saying is, you know, I don't care to see a Dillian White, Anthony Joshua rematch, you know, and I don't know how the UK fans feel about it. And the uh, Anthony Joshua has been on record saying he don't want to do that. So why not go ahead and man up and one up Deontay Wilder and go ahead and fight, uh, Luis Ortiz. Since you you know everybody called Deontay Wilder a bum, they pick Anthony Joshua. Luis Ortiz should be easy money, because remember, Luis Ortiz was Anthony Joshua's mandatory before the WBA pulled the plug on him and said he failed the drug test, a WBC vital drug test, and the very WBC cleared him, and WBA never came back and gave him his title shot. You know they went rogue, they went ghost on him, and he was a uh, he was supposed to fight Vladimir Klitschko for the Super WBA vacant title. But he let Klitschko and Joshua fight for the table for the title, and promised the WBA was supposed to get him his title shot. After that, and they never did, even though he was, his name was cleared of juicing the second time around because he juiced one time versus Chief Coyote. But why not do uh, Jarrell? I'm how not do uh, Luis Ortiz versus Dillian White, and the winner get Anthony Joshua in April if, if Deontay Wilder truly going to fight Tyson Fury in December, and they can't get a, a Deontay Wilder fight signed. That's the next logical thing for me. Why not? Eddie Hearn, he once signed Luis Ortiz. Once upon a time, Luis Ortiz was on Matchroom before Matchroom USA. They signed Luis Ortiz to keep him or keep him away from um, Anthony Joshua. And they knew he was going to be a problem. You know, you got Tony Bell, you around here running his yap, saying he got a better uh, resume than Wilder with a win over David Hay. David Hay ain't been shit for years. You know what I'm saying? Ortiz and Wilder will wash hay. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's a fact. You know, Tony Bell, you do all that talking, but when Wilder put up on him, you know, he he, he pussied out, man. And Miller, another guy that do all that talking. You know, Ortiz was an old man, this and that. I don't see him signing up. He trying to fight Arthur Spilka, who been knocked out back-to-back times and just got a win. Okay? Dillian White proved to be legit out of everybody on this list other than Joshua. Dillian White has proven to be the most legit guy here. So why not do a Dillian White versus Luis Ortiz winner against Anthony Joshua in April? Because they know that'll be playing with the church's money. Because if Luis, or- Luis Ortiz would dog walk Dillian White, let me tell you that right now. You know, anybody with a brain knows that. And if Luis Ortiz go over to Wimberley in October, well, in April, if Joshua get past Pavekin and beats up on Joshua, then they already know Luis Ortiz and Deontay Wilder are going to make a fortune over the United States. And all the momentum that the UK had, is gonna be, it's gonna be, all that momentum is going to swing and come back here. And that's going to be the end of Anthony Joshua. That three-year extension for $100 million he signed, that ain't going to mean nothing. You know, in a perfect world, you would get that. Ortiz versus Dillian White for the right to fight uh, uh, Anthony Joshua. But Joshua not about that life. He never wanted Luis Ortiz. He never had any intentions. He was going, he was going to drop that WBA belt if he had to fight Luis Ortiz. He's going to drop it. Drop it like it's hot. Yep. And that was, that's what the business was, man. He was going to drop that belt. And um, when nobody, when nobody ever, they was going to try to rationalize why he dropped the belt. But all these dudes, you know, talk a lot, you know. You know, especially Miller and White. They do all this talking. Said uh, Ortiz was old. Why don't you get Ortiz a spin? You know what I'm saying? 
Stop ducking them. Give them a spin. Do a drug test. Y'all can go ahead and fight. And he beat everybody on this list, in my opinion. Everybody on this list. But it's time for him to get that. It's time for him to get that win, man. It's time for him to get that chance, the opportunity. And Dillian White and, and, and Ortiz make perfect sense. You know, nobody wants to see Joshua and Dillian White again. We know what the result going to be. I think Dillian White has improved. And Deontay Wilder, I mean, uh, and Anthony Joshua has uh, regressed. But, but still, we already seen that, man. And I hope the UK fans won't buy that week pay-per-view for 20 pounds. That'll be dumb. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, to be honest, you know, even though Joshua said he don't want to fight Dillian White, I mean, even even though it's risky if they don't promote it right, he sh- he'd be better off if uh if uh Joshua fought Miller in the United States in April. And they got to promote the hell out of it, but that that would make more sense for Joshua. You know, and, and unless David Hay be Usyk, you know what I'm saying, then, I mean, unless Tony Bell be Usyk, then you want to fight Usyk, you probably could sell that. But, like I said, Anthony Joshua don't have nowhere to go, man. If Wilder and Fury fight, they backed him into a corner because they take two of the biggest names out there. Plus, he got to get past Alexander Povetkin. So, in my opinion, he should fight Luis Ortiz to prove something, to prove a point that, you know, he's better than Wilder, you know, without even having to face him because he's not willing to face him. And that he can handle Luis Ortiz. Because obviously, Deontay Wilder handled Luis Ortiz. That was Anthony Joshua's responsibility to do that. But they all don't want Ortiz, man. Same thing they did with Ricky Diaz. You know, I said Ricky Diaz was was this old man. And, um, you know, he old, he old, he old. And, and you know, he, you know, he this and that. You know, they, and they, you know, they ain't got to fight him. You know, or Cerner Cruz and Frampton and Quig and Morris ain't got to fight him. And they just they just act like he you know he wasn't being ducked, you know he they act like he wasn't running guys out of weight classes from weight classes they was running away from him, and they just wanted to make it seem like Rigondeaux was being crazy and Rigondeaux had to take a massive risk in my Eddie Hunt voice, and move up two weight classes and fight Vasyl Lomachenko, you know just to put food on the table because every because all them dudes was was blackballing them out of the, the divisions not one division they moved up a couple divisions away from Rigondeaux. That's what they're doing for for uh, uh, Luis Ortiz. It ain't they not moving up divisions. They just avoiding them, you know. And they got the sanction of bodies bagging by avoiding them. The same, the same thing they did to Rigondeaux tag team and uh, the sanction of bodies and, and the managers and fighters. You know, blackballing them out. But y'all know y'all know how it goes. Same shit, different toilet. Hopefully Ortiz can get one of these clowns in the ring. Hopefully it's uh you know Joshua sooner than later. But like I said, Joshua he ain't cut like that man to take that type of fight. And uh, we all know that, man. But um, let me know who y'all want to see Luis Ortiz fight next. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what the business is. But it's the Boxing Clinic and more. It's your boy, CJ Goodfella. Don't forget, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All right? Also, got the new college sports page popping off. S1210 College Sports Most Wanted. As soon as that jump off, as soon as the football season jump off, and basketball season jump off, too, we're going to be all in over there. So go make sure you go get your subscription. Uh, go subscribe over there so I can check it out. Also, we got... The new Raw and Uncut podcast featuring the Kelly Enigma myself. Just click on the link. It can take you to the App Store. You can go through the web browser. Sign up with your Facebook or Google account. Subscribe. I mean, subscribe to it. Comment. Rate us. Whatever you want to do on there. And you're going to enjoy it because it's Raw and Uncut. Triple rated R. Definitely uncensored. Nine episodes of from politics to Floyd and 50 Beef to NBA talk. All types of things. And hopefully you can record some more today. Don't forget to share this. Share the page, share the videos, one time for the one time. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell icon so you won't miss another TBC and more video. Much blessings to everybody. Y'all know what it is. We gone.